Hi, Jeff Spira here again. And today I want to talk about Pacific Power Dories. Now the story of Pacific Power Dories starts with this animal, the wild salmon. <laughs> this is a king salmon that, uh, that grows wild along the northeast coast of the, I'm sorry, the northwest coast of the United States. It's really the Pacific Northwest. Um, uh, you have to catch these in the ocean. You can't really catch them in freshwater. Well, you can, but their meat's not very good if you wait till they get in freshwater because their body changes. And, and salmon typically, um, they're born in freshwater in streams, and then they go out to sea, and they live their life at sea. And when they're ready to spawn, they go back upstream and... Uh, um, you know, lay their eggs and then they die. Well, when they go back to lay their eggs, their, their body changes a lot as it goes from salt water to fresh water. So you really need to catch them in the ocean if you want to eat them. Um, anyway, so they're caught along the Pacific Northwest, which is Northern California, Oregon, Washington, Victoria Island, which is part of British Columbia, uh, Southeast Alaska and the Southern coast of Alaska. That's, that's the, uh, the main location for them. There's actually four or five different types of salmon that, uh, that originate there. Um, and the uh, king salmon, the Chinook, is considered the best. It's one of the biggest as well. So, But the coastline in this area looks like this. Um, it's, uh, it's rocky shores uh, and, and there are some small beaches, but typically um, it's, they're very wind blown. Um, you may have heard of the trade winds. That's a kind of an easterly source wind that blows in the, in the tropics and blows towards the west. But uh, up in the Pacific Northwest, they call it the Roaring Forties. And what means that they, um, the winds out of the west blow hard. Um, and so they, uh, they tend to blow a lot of really rough, horrible weather up there. Um, so it's a difficult place to, to run a boat and to fish. Um, it's a lot rougher than, than people seem to think. Uh, you know, I get a lot of people tell me, oh, you, you look out, you go out in the Gulf, it's rough out there. Uh, I don't know what they're talking about <laughs> because, I mean, I, I, I know there can be tornadoes, I mean, hurricanes and stuff, but, uh, but it's not like the everyday roaring 40s. Um, here we have, uh, here's where the uh, Coast Guard um, trains their sailors to work in rough water. This is Cape Disappointment. It's the mouth of the uh, Columbia River between Washington and Oregon. Um, anyway, well, the original boats that fished this area, they launched off the beach, and these were double-ender dories. Um, they had lots of rocker, and, and they were essentially rowed. And you can see this dory here. It's an old, old picture, I think, 100 years old or something. And um, you can see it has uh, salmon trolling rods built into it. So it's, it was a commercial fishing boat for salmon. Um, I have one uh, designed like that. It's called the Haystack Beach. It's a 17-footer. Um, and mine has a well in it where you can put small power. Now, not a lot of power, but a small amount you can. Uh, it's a displacement hull, so it's not really suitable for, for to go fast. So, But Haystack Beach is, is on the coast of Oregon. It's uh, west of Portland, about at the same uh, uh, latitude. And, um, you know, it's a beautiful place. Uh, and they have these big haystack-looking rocks and a, and, a, and a shallow sort of beach, beachy area there. Um, so after the advent of power, these pointed double ender dories really weren't, didn't make much sense, you know, unless you were using low power. They wanted something that could move faster. So they, they went to a wide stern dory with a flat aft section, but still kept the upturned bow. Um, and they, they ended up with something that would plane. And, and these, this was very appropriate because, again, the harbors, you know, you know get get uh, a bar across them with breaking waves and stuff. So they, they intended to launch them mostly off the beach. 
Um, Pacific City is the center of that now, just a little bit uh, south of Haystack Beach. And here's what those dories look like going out in the ocean. They're launching their boat into the surf. So the builders of these found out that the boats also work quite well in lakes and along run, rushing rivers like the Columbia River and different places like that. So um, the, um, the use of these dories expanded considerably. Um, they're also used in uh, Southern California um, and, and south into Mexico. Um, here's a place I used to go uh, fishing uh, in Baja on the Pacific coast, um, it's down about a hundred miles south of the border. And you can see that's a Pacific power dory right there. So, um, I sell them all over, um, for fast moving rivers, open bays, lakes, all kinds of places. So I got builders in the Caribbean, in the South Pacific, in the Northeast, the Arctic, um, Australia, New Zealand, the Med, um, Iceland, um, South Africa and, you know, all over the U.S. and Canada. So it's a very popular design. You know, a lot of people think that because these boats um, have a flat bottom that they must be an awful ride. Well, you know, people really ask me in awe that, you know, I recommend flat bottom boats be used in the ocean. Well, <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> they have these full upturned bows. And, and the, the bows are full, they're, they're, they're blunt, let's put it that way. They're not sharp and pointy. So the bows become very buoyant um, and heavy chop won't come over, over the bow that way. They rise up to meet the oncoming seas. Watch this one going through the surf and you can see that, that uh, water doesn't come over the bow. <laughs> Look at that. That's as far as as I can. Here's a 17 foot Tillamook, which is one of my designs uh, in a rough and blowy place. This is uh, Tillamook Bay in Oregon. And you can see that, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's rough out there, but uh, the boat's not bouncing around much or moving around much there, so. The Pacific dories really don't displace very well, like as compared to my Carolina dories. So they need to be powered. Um, it would be it would be way too much work to row one. You just really couldn't do it it's because it's a planing hull. You know, it's it's not like the original double ender dories like I showed you earlier. So, um, but the wide transom is there so it'll handle lots of power. You can you can put a lots of power on it, but you don't need to. They they run quite well with low power. You know, here's a 19 foot Albion, you know, cruising along with 
two adults and four kids and only 25 horsepower. You can see how that looks. This is a river along the Gulf Coast. These boats are really easy to build, so they're some of my most popular boats. Um, I have photos of hundreds of them in different sizes. So, I typically design these in two basic styles. The standard style that comes with uh, low sides, um, and, uh, and you deck over the, the frames so that they're not uh, necessarily self-bailing deck. And then I have what I call an offshore version of it which has higher sides and a, and a self-bailing deck that's set above the frames um, that you would, you would deck over and put a scuppers in it so it would drain out the transom. Um, and it also uh, has a, um, a, a built-in uh, designed um, splash well so that a following C, you know, won't come over through the slot and over the transom, you know, so, so if it does come through the slot, it drains back out, so, um, but both use the same bottom shape and size and, um, and the same side flare and everything, so they're, you know, performance-wise, they're, they're pretty much identical other than the offshore versions are a bit heavier, so, so, uh, but they'll plane and, and perform just as, just equally as well. So, uh, they start at about 15 feet. That's the standard size for the Seneca. It may be 14 and a half. I'm not sure, but anyway, it's popular for one or two people. Um, it's easy to build, but light and sturdy, you know, and you, it's very useful in lakes, rivers, bays, and, and, uh, you know, nice days in the ootion. Um, I have a new version called the Kootenay as well, um, but I haven't seen any photos of it yet. Um, but it's kind of the limits of an offshore boat. It's pretty small for that. So, Next up is, is a very popular size um, called the Tillamook. Now, it's a 17-footer. Uh, it makes it a great all-around family boat, and uh, it'll haul a big load and be safe in rough water. So... Um, here's one fr uh, from Turkey in the Mediterranean, um, and I have uh, others all over. I mean, they're used just about everywhere. Um, the offshore version is called the Courtenay, and it's, uh, it's got those characteristics of a self bailing deck and such. And you can also put a cat cutty cabin on it if you like. So, um, Here's an interesting one. Here's a Tillamook with a builder um, in uh, Alaska taking his wife and two toddlers out for its maiden voyage. So, and this, this one has 40 horsepower on it. So. Our first time out on the boat. The next size up is called the Albion, and this is roughly equivalent to the dories you saw being launched in Pacific City uh, earlier in the videos along the beach. You know, it runs great with like 25 to 50 horsepower, but you can go higher if you like. Um, you know, it's not really a race boat, and you know, I can't imagine why you'd want a huge engine on it. It does just fine with the smaller motors, so. Uh, a lot of the commercial fishermen pick the Albion because it's got a lot of deck um, and it's very stable to walk around on, shallow draft, and, you know, it's got a huge load carrying capability. I've got guys doing shrimping with it, uh, net fishermen catching uh, menhaden and, and, and such in the, uh, in the east. Um, 
salmon trollers, of course, uh, had picket, and they use it with a lot of success there. The offshore version of this is called the Anacapa, which is the name of an island in the Channel Islands in Southern California. It's about, I don't know, maybe 30 miles offshore in the Santa Barbara Channel, which can get rough and blowy too. So uh, it's uh, available is uh, for open use or uh, with a cabin for overnight stays. The next one up is my Winchester and it's a 23 foot design. It's a bigger, beamier boat than, uh, and can handle really rough water. You know, some of the commercial crabbers uh, in the Pacific Northwest like it for their Dungeness crab boats because um, there's lots of deck space and, and a rugged sturdiness that commercial guys prefer. So. Also, I have an offshore version called the Farallon. Now, the Farallon Islands are uh, off the coast of San Francisco. You may know them as the place where um, there's lots of great white sharks and orcas and things like that. They're, they're 30 miles out or so. Again, a lot of rough water getting there. So, I've also got two larger um, offshore Pacific power dories. Uh, one's called the Sitka and the, and the larger one's called the Kodiak, 27 and 32 feet. And they were requested uh, for me to design by commercial crabbers uh, that fished up in Alaska and, and northern Canada. Um, the one in blue was built in, in Minnesota, as a matter of fact. Um, and it's, uh, it's got a larger than normal cabin because the commercial guys generally like the, a lot of deck space because they need to store their uh, commercial crab traps. So. Now the Sitka comes with an optional V entry. Um, I did this because a lot of people asked for it and one of my competitors has it, has his um, design with a V entry. So people wanted mine that way too. So personally, I think it's kind of silly. Um, you know, I get an email a couple times a month of people asking for a V entry in, in one of the smaller, uh, you know, Pacific power dories. Um, I don't offer it because it ruins the handling of these boats. You get a, a bump steer characteristic that, that uh, comes in and you do not increase the rideability. I mean, it doesn't decrease any pounding. So those that have tried to build one um, regret it. And they really do. It's a lot of work and no benefit except ruining the handling. So, um, you know, I, 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 I don't know why people seem to think that all of a sudden it'll ride wonderfully if you put a V entry into it, um, but it won't. The upturned flat broad bow is a, is a much uh, more controllable uh, and better way of going uh, on these Pacific power dories. So, well, that's the story of the Pacific power dories. So if you're looking for an all around boat, you can build easily and quickly um, and you can hang, hang more power on than, than a, other kind of dory. It'll get up on a nice plane, work in a big variety of conditions. It'll be safe and secure to take your family out on the water. You know, there's really few designs more logical than the Pacific Power Dory. Also, please do subscribe to this uh, uh, YouTube channel and, um, and hit the bell so that you get notified of new uh, videos that are posted. Um, if you're interested in any of my boats, uh, please go by my website, uh, and it's got, uh, um, lots of great stuff on there. Uh, it also has an insider section where I've got additional, uh, information and, and you can freely download the, uh, manuals that I talk about and such. Um, and, uh, um, all it, all it takes is you joining and putting in your email address. So I have a way to get a hold of you. Um, but please, please do that. And again, thank you very much for watching.